Hi, I'm Chris with the information website smartirrigation.com and today we're going to be doing some repair work on a copper pipe which happens to be an irrigation manifold and we're going to do some soldering repair work. So I've been told there's a leak in one of these joints on this end elbow. So we're gonna get someone to turn on the water for us so we can actually see the exact location. So after turning it on, we've noticed there's a crack right there, most likely due to freezing. So we're gonna have to desolder this elbow and cut a new piece of copper pipe and desolder it out of here and replace this part. So before doing your repair, make sure that you're complying with all the bylaws in your municipality or your state and you're doing it to their code. Um, some instances, if it was under the ground, you'd have to use a brazing system rather than a soldering system, etc., etc. So, um, Also, safety is a big step that we want to make sure we don't miss. So safety goggles and we want to make sure the area is clean of anything that is combustible. So we're going to remove all these leaves from the area that could catch fire and we're going to actually put some heat shielding which we're going to show you on the house and on the handles so they don't melt. For this repair, these are some of the tools and parts you're going to need to have on hand. We're going to leave a link in the description if you need to find some of these tools. Starting with a torch, some propane, leadless solder, a cutting tool for the copper pipe. We've got some three quarter inch copper pipe. We've got a deburring tool. We have some emery cloth slash um, sandpaper for the copper pipe, soldering paste, and a brush for that, a mirror to check our work, tape, and we have some heat shields that we've just found some galvanized thin steel pieces. And this, this one's actually a professional ceramic heat shield cloth. A couple of channel locks, safety goggles and gloves for safety so you don't burn yourself, and some water. And we're going to have a cloth on hand as well. I'm going to remove these handles or anything that can burn that's easily removed. So we've installed some metal plates here to protect the house from burning or getting any uh, marks. If this was like a vinyl siding house you'd have to probably add a layer of wood or something behind it not just metal because it'll, the heat will go right through but since we have like a brick it's uh, quite good we just don't want to get any flame burn on it. Um, we also have the heat shield cloth here that's going to protect this part so we just want to desolder this elbow right now. And this is another option if you want to be extra safe and you're not a professional. We can put in a wet cloth here to keep the heat from transferring. We don't want to desolder too far. So that wet cloth will keep this area cool during the process. Got to have this handy, set up to the right size. So we're going to be using that to pull that off once we get the heat going.
Now that we've removed this elbow, we're going to have to desolder the pipe out of this T. So that's our next step. Okay, now that it's out, we can really see the crack there. So I dropped this piece in water so I don't burn myself. Now I'm going to measure another piece in the new copper, exactly the same size. We're going to cut it with this cutting tool. Right about there. Basically, you turn, tighten it and then tighten a little more as you're turning and it gradually bites right through the pipe with a cutting wheel so it takes a few turns there we go there we have it The cutting process caused kind of a ridge on the inside of this copper tube. So we have a deburring tool to remove that. That's nice and, nice and smooth now inside. It's just not good for water flow when you have that ridge. Now we have some of this cloth or sandpaper. I have emery cloth stuff. So you just have to do the sides that are going to be touching the new solder. Now we're going to prep the other side, the parts that we removed that have to get put back on. So the elbow, you need to get in here. And try to remove some of the solder because it's going to make it a little harder to put back together. That should do it. And then this side here. You want to make sure you sand in this direction rather than back and forth. So I'm going to test fit this part in here now. See if it fits good. And it looks like it does. And this one here, it's still a little tight. I have some solder built up in here that I probably want to remove to make it easier to reattach. So this one goes in a little better, but it's still a bit tight. But if you don't want to spend a very long time sanding out all that solder, we can just do it like this and the heat will push it in once it melts. The next step is to apply soldering paste to all the joints. So we're going to use this stuff here and a brush. You probably don't want to get this on your hands. It's not the most friendly. And inside the joints as well. I'm 
just going to put this together. As best we can for now. Okay. So I'm going to wet this cloth again. Make sure there's enough water on it. And just put this over here so we don't transfer the heat to a joint we don't want to come apart. That keeps that cool. Okay, I got my gloves back on and I got my lead-free solder out. I'm ready to start soldering. It wasn't uh, flowing very well, so we're gonna add a little more paste now that it's cooled down. So it's not as easy as soldering brand new copper parts, but we're gonna clean it up and see how we did. I wanna make sure it flowed all the way around. There's no gaps. Seems to be good on that side. Okay, well, next step, test it. Water. So look, looks like she's holding. Well, that certainly wasn't an easy repair job. We had to desolder two parts and solder in a new part, all with a very close proximity to the building, but it's holding. So there you have it. Now you know how to do a complex desoldering, resoldering copper repair job. And for more repair tips, check out our website at smartirrigation.com. And remember to like and subscribe.